Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're the Menschformers, your bi-weekly look at the world of Jews and sports. Gabe, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Boker Tov. I'm in a very tranquil, I'm sort of, apologies for my sound quality. I'm out in a cabin with my family. I'm currently seated next to my, next to my wife and mother who are doing a puzzle together. I think I can hear them uh, puzzling. Usually, usually a relatively silent activity, but, but glad to know that they're, uh, they're doing some vigorous puzzling. Um, vigorous that's- puzzling. <laughs> it's nice that you got some some time off the summer to, to get away. Uh, we'll keep it nice and short uh, so you can get back to your vacation. But uh, a few things to chat about in the in the world of Jews and sports. Um, Very exciting couple of weeks. Big exciting today. I mean, we're recording this on the day that uh, it should come out by the time the quarterfinal happens. But Denis Shapovalov. Yeah, on to the quarterfinals at Wimbledon. Um, he had a match against... Um, uh, What's his name? Uh, Roberto, right? Roberto Batista Gut yes. um, of Spain. Yes. And he's going to be playing uh, Karen uh, Kachanov of Russia, which, you know, he's lower rank than he is. So I, I would think he'd be the favorite. Um, but I believe after that, he has Djokovic in the semifinals if he were to make it. Yeah. And so that's that probably not going to. Is brutal because Djokovic is just <laughs> on a tear and is probably going to win Wimbledon for his, you know, his record tying uh, amount of major. Or grand slams. So. I don't. I don't know if if a if a Jewish player has ever won a major. I mean, we had that Jewish episode. We we could talk to uh, uh, our you know the CJN's tennis correspondent, but I think this would sort of be this would be a, it's a big news for the Jews and big news for El Chapo. Yeah, I think um, in, in a singles uh, event, a Jew has never won a major, or if it has happened, it was like you know at a time when the when the grand slams were different and at uh, a time when they had to game. pretend not to be Jewish. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, obviously good luck to Denis Shapovalov. Um, the other Jewish players uh, on the men's side, uh, Diego Schwartzman and uh, Aslan Karatsev didn't, didn't fare as well. Diego is like, you know, his game is really just not made for grass. He hadn't, he hadn't won a grass game in a long, until just the last few years of his year. So, um, you know, hopefully he can bounce back at the U.S. Uh, the last Grand Slam of the year. And I, I, Dennis, uh, Dennis, hopefully make, a, make, a, make this run as far as it can go. Make a run, absolutely. And, he, and, you know, hard court is even his specialty. So he's got the hard court season coming up and, he, and he's going to do great. But we have another Jewish sporting first this week oh what was that pretty exciting uh adam fox long island jewish boy uh grew up as an idolizing the new york rangers and now plays for the new york rangers won the norris trophy as the nhl's best defenseman oh wow that's great um uh huge uh the we we've done some research yes we think he's the first jewish player in the nhl to win a major award no disrespect to former nhl man of the year jason zucker but in terms of a sort of a quality of play award. Right. So I looked one. into this and, and Jason Zucker, uh, he won the King Clancy trophy a few years ago. Can you tell me what, do you know what that is? I think it's sort of like a, a man of the year, like, you know, okay. leadership off the ice. He donated a lot of money and raised a lot of money for a children's hospital. So he was the man of the year. Good for him. Uh, well, he's uh, a mensch. He's, yeah. he, he won the award for being the biggest mensch. That's great. That's a good mensch award. But uh, exciting to see Adam Fox win the Norris Trophy and he and be, you know, um, be a... Uh, be awarded the trophy for, for being the best best defenseman. He's he's a young guy, Fox, right? He's he's uh, just a few years into the league. Yeah, I think this is his third season, and it was really a huge breakout for him. Um, last year he sort of established himself, and then this year he had a spectacular year, and and is now sort of the the defenseman to beat when it comes to ability. Is there is there a way to measure defenseman that's not just not just goals and assists? Like I assume it has something to do with like how well you block the puck or, or stop. Other opposing players from scoring and things like that. Are there are yeah. there good stats that so measure this, that? There are, but Fox's award was sort of controversial because he did have the most points okay. and the most goals of any defenseman. So you know, some of the purists said we should be doing it on things more than just goals. But his play was very good. Otherwise, he just also happened to be a great offensive player. I see. Okay, that's very cool. Um, that's you know really exciting. And and but someone we have we have blocked shots and so on and so forth. Right. We haven't really talked about Adam Fox much in this podcast, but he's definitely someone we should be keeping in mind in the future. Um, playing Absolutely. for New York. Um, we met, That's exciting. I mentioned him last week that he was a contender for the award. Oh, okay. um, and little did I know how right I was. Uh, yeah. That said, I think, Jamie, t- tell us about what you looked into there. Who are some other sports where uh, Jewish players have won big awards? Well, the, uh, the deepest is Major League Baseball. No surprise. Um, a number of major, uh, sorry, most valuable players. Hank Greenberg had two MVPs. 
Uh, Lou Boudreau, who, who has some Jewish ancestry, won the 1948 AL MVP. Um, and then more recently, Ryan Braun, of course, won the 2007, or sorry, the 2011 NL MVP. Um, Sandy Koufax, Koufax won three Cy Youngs. Um, uh, as well, Steve Stone in 1980 won a Cy Young Award. And uh, Bob Melvin, three Manager of the Year awards. Pretty impressive. Um, Sid Luckman, impressive. Sid Luckman out in, in the NFL in 1943 won the MVP. Um, Andre Tippett, who is a convert to Judaism, that was something new to learn, I think, for, for me, won the Defensive Player of yep. the Year in, in 1985. And, uh, you know, not exactly a league wide season long trophy, but of course, Julian Edelman won the Super Bowl MVP back in 2019. Um, and then in yep. in the NBA, the uh, the only trophy trophy that a Jewish player won uh, was was well, Dolph Shays won back before it was the NBA, but Amari Stoudemire um, won the 2003 NBA Rook of the Year, also made a, a number of all NBA first teams, or sorry, one M- all NBA first team and a few other all NBA teams and uh, a few executives, the executives of the year for red hour back Lawrence Frank and uh, Jerry Krause, who uh, you'll, you'll oh. all remember from the last dance documentary. There you go. And there's something I, I remember, but the, the naming of NBA awards, we don't know that the awards have names. We just talked to them about the MVP, but who are they named after? Yeah, that's, that's, that was an interesting thing to learn about as well, because um I think there's a few trophies that are named after people that like we have an idea that they're named like the Larry O'Brien trophy, um, I think being the big one. But uh, the NBA MVP award is called the Maurice Podoloff trophy. Um, He was not somebody that I was familiar with, but uh, he's an American. He was an American lawyer in basketball and ice hockey administration. He was the president of the Basketball Association of America, Basketball Association of America, which became the NBA. And he was the president of the NBA from 1949 to 1963. Um, probably someone we should we should look into and talk about more in the podcast. Um, sort of history of, of Jewish sort of sports commissioners or uh, Jewish executives. So the MV, MVP trophy is named after him. Um, meanwhile, so, the, so one so one could say that you know LeBron James has four Podoloff trophies. <laughs> you could, except no one calls it that. I mean, it's sort of funny how that catches on in some ways and doesn't in others. Like the um, I think Major League Baseball's Rookie of the Year trophy is like technically called the Jackie Robinson Award. And like, I've never heard anyone refer to it as that. <laughs> no, right. Of course. And not. that's Jackie Robinson. But you know what I mean? Be. Like he, he's Jackie Robinson. And even with him, his name being on the, uh, the award, we don't really call it that. Um, meanwhile, I, I should say the rookie, the NBA Rookie of the Year Award is named after Eddie Gottlieb. Uh, Gottlieb was, you know, sort of legendary coach and manager of the what was then the Philadelphia Warriors, um, became an owner of the team. Uh, you know, really just like sort of foundational person in organizing the, the BAA, which became the NBA. Um, so he's the rookie of the year again, something I'd never heard of and coach of the year is of course, after is named after the legendary Boston Celtics coach and executive red Auerbach. And I, I have heard it called you know, the red Auerbach trophy. I didn't even know he was Jewish. You, you didn't know, know red Auerbach was Jewish. That I just, I just assumed he was Irish. Like everybody involved. Oh, in that's ridiculous. Office. Gabe, you're, you're the host of a podcast about Jews and sports. You should have known that red Auerbach <laughs> was Jewish. Not to, is, not, you know what? This is I'm going to call, I'm, I'm not going to call you out. I'm going to call you in. So, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to learn more about Red Auerbach with you and we can talk to him. And uh, if, if there's any fans of ours from Boston, uh, please, please tell us your favorite Red Auerbach stories. He was famous for uh, smoking cigars at the end of games. Yeah. And he, he would have, uh, he would only allow himself to have an alcoholic drink when they won the championship. Yeah. He would have a single glass of champagne to celebrate a championship. Well, uh, we should move so, on now. Sounds a lot like my afternoon. <laughs> we should move on now to a very exciting interview we have with Dean Pellman. Uh, Dean is going to be a member of the Team Israel uh, baseball team at the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, which are actually having 2021 in a month. But, uh, you know, we're still calling They're the still called the 2020 Olympics. Yeah. yeah, that's very exciting. And and he's playing on Team Israel, which is sort of currently about to embark on a somewhat of a barnstorming tour of the American Northeast. Um, but I'm not entirely sure how one can watch those games. Uh, well, I can tell you Jamie, that I, I think you might be able to tell me. I can. Uh, Team Israel's first exhibition game, which is against the Fire Department of New York, is being broadcast by Max Live at maxlive.com. That's M A C S L I V E.com. Uh, Max Live does high quality broadcasts of both the Yeshiva University Max basketball games and the Sarachek tournament. So if you can't make it in person to see Team Israel play this uh, this summer in advance of the Olympics, tune in at maxlive.com or find the details for Max Live at uh, any of Max Max uh, social media channels. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the Yeshiva, Yeshiva University. University. Exactly. Yeshiva University of Max. And you mentioned the Sarah Czech tournament uh, named after the legendary uh, Yeshiva coach who uh, may have invented the pick and roll. 
Wow. It's it's really cool when like some some sports term that's been in been in play for like a hundred years, just like no, some guy drew it up on a chalkboard, you know. Oh yeah. There's a there's a story about the Yale Eli's winning the NCAA championship in the 30th because they invented the bounce pass. Wow, that's great. Well, let's move on to our interview <laughs> with Dean Pellman. <laughs> We are joined tonight by Dean Pellman. Dean, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, Dean, would you mind just telling our audience a, a little bit about yourself, who you are, why you're on the podcast? Uh, I'm Dean Pellman from South Florida, uh, and I'm on the I'm a pitcher for the Israel national team that qualified for the Olympics coming up. We can see that you're in a moving vehicle right now uh, as we're uh, doing this interview. Can you tell us where you are? I'm actually parked, but I'm um, parked outside of Grindhouse <laughs> Facility, a baseball facility in uh, South Florida that my high school coach opened up. I'm with. I'm actually joined with two of my teammates on the Olympic team, Talarel and Asaf. They're inside working out, and another kid on the extended roster, Ido Pellet. Oh, so cool. I got three Israelis out here, and we've been uh, just practicing, getting ready to getting ready for the games. That's great. It's good to, good to know that you're in a parked vehicle. We uh, you know we recommend against podcasting and driving. Yeah. So, um, Dean, we're talking to you uh, at the beginning of July. Uh, the Olympics are coming up in just in just three short weeks now. Um, can you tell us a little bit about about how you and the rest of Team Israel have been preparing uh, for the last couple of months? Oh uh, well, for me, it's been uh, this facility that I'm parked outside of. I've been coming here Monday through Saturday. They have great pitching coaches uh, and a great weightlifting coach that's been getting me in shape and getting my mechanics right. And we actually fly out in two days to the Northeast. We're going out to like New York, PA, Connecticut for about nine ex- exhibition games before we fly out from JFK to Tokyo. And, and who are you playing? Uh, we got a bunch of random teams, really anyone who would want to play against us because we just got to get uh, innings in against live hitters. Like most of the players on the mm-hmm. team are like me, which is working out in the facility. So uh, we're playing like the New York Boulders, like independent league teams. We're playing the Cal Ripken League All-Stars, uh, just really anybody who would play us. Right. So, I, you know, I guess it's important That's to get those awesome. reps in, uh, both exactly. for all the individual players. Not everybody's necessarily playing in organized baseball this this summer who's on the team. And also, I would imagine just getting sort of cohesive, uh, you know, training together as a team makes a big difference as well. Exactly. Got to play together as a team. And then also, like you said, we got to get the reps in. I mean, I'm working out here every day for the last, I've been mean, qualified like two years ago now. I've been working out every day here, <laughs> but it's nothing like when there's an actual batter in the box. And so you, I mean, you're, you're an American Jewish guy. You're from Florida, South Florida, as you said, you know, well, how did you wind up on team Israel? Can you take us through a bit of that process? You know, we know you played in college and now you're going to the Olympics. Can you fill in the intervening decade almost? Yeah. Well, I think I really of everyone on the team probably have the craziest story of how I ended up on the squad. I was, uh, I graduated college. I was already done playing baseball and I moved out. all my family's from Israel and I moved out to work at my cousin's financial firm. And I was mm-hmm. just biking. I was just biking to the beach one random Friday. And I happened to pass a little field that some kids were playing baseball on. And I was just fascinated by baseball because I played my whole life and I stopped sure. by, ended up coaching the national teams. And then they asked me if I wanted to pitch for <laughs> the Olympic qualifying team. And I said, if my arm can handle it, I'll do it. And here we are. That's really such an amazing story. And I think it has a, you know, specifically Jewish character to it of, I was going to work at my cousin's financial services firm when exactly. all of a sudden I got drafted onto the Israeli baseball team. Who'd have thunk it? Exactly. I fit the, fit it. Fit the I, also, I mean, like we, there isn't a lot of, you know, you guys are sort of making the history of Israeli baseball from the start as we're going on. But, you know, you tell the story that, oh, and this guy's pitching on the team because he was biking by and they were looking for somebody is a really good, you know, story for for Bob Costas to say during the Olympics. Yeah, uh, I really do think that it's one of the most wild, more wild stories that there is out there. I mean, people work their whole lives every day to get into the Olympics and I have, I biked into it. Well, you know, no matter how uh, you no matter how you get there, the important thing is that you're going to be an Olympian. I mean, does has that sort of sunk in yet? How does that feel to know that you know you're going to be um, going yeah, to be an Olympian? I mean, it's really unbelievable. It's even cooler having two Israeli parents that I get to do it for uh, Team Israel. I mean, I played on Team USA growing up, but it's Israel right. definitely. It's uh, we live listen to Hebrew at the house. We speak Hebrew, so it just means a lot more. Um, but really hasn't even sunk in yet we still got like only three weeks left and i can't even imagine what it's going to be like walking out in the opening ceremonies and stuff so how much how much hebrew is spoken on the team 
Um, there's a four Israelis that like grew up in Israel. And then I think I'm the only other one who speaks Hebrew. That would be, uh, it would be cool if you guys could adopt a, a little Hebrew saying here or there, like, you know, like, uh, um, a lot of like Latin baseball players yell, yell tango, you know, to, to yeah. say they've got, they've got the ball <laughs> in the outfield. We got to figure out what the Hebrew expression for, uh, I've got it, I've got it or, or back <laughs> off is. Yeah, and, we got a maybe... bunch of Americans yelling yalla. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yalla would be good. Sababa, yeah, Sababa, you know, if they're, they're that's my favorite you word. Out. Sababa, Sababa. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one. Ah. So oh, when do you guys, uh, be... when do you guys fly to Tokyo? Uh, we're flying out to New York to, uh, in two days, the 7th. And I think we fly from JFK on the 21st. Okay. So then a few days to acclimatize, I guess. And then uh, the tournament starts a few days after that, after the opening ceremonies. Yes, sir. And uh, I know that Israel was put into a group with uh, Korea and, and the U.S. I, I think there should be interesting games and hopefully some W's for, for Team Israel. It's it's an interesting tournament. It's like a double elimination uh, tournament. Yeah, it's, it, weirdest this whole, this setup whole, I've ever seen. This whole Olympic baseball experience is just like a convoluted system to get Japan a, a baseball medal. But, yep. uh, you know, hopefully Team Israel is, 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 the be- is a beneficiary as well. I mean, it is sort of like a, you win a game at the right time and you're in the finals kind of thing. Um, yep. who, so who knows how it'll go? I mean, and, I, I think everyone's rooting for Israel knows that knows that there's a real chance of a, of a medal. And that's 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 really what everyone's hoping for. Uh, as a as a, you know, Israeli or, or child of Israeli, someone who's lived in Israel, do you see much uh, development of the game in Israel? Like, have you seen a change in, in how Israelis perceive perceive baseball or interest in baseball at a young level? Um, kind of. It's really tough over there. It's there's it's not one of the major sports by any means. But um, while I was there, I got to coach the 14, 16, and 18 national uh, under national teams, and we won that. We actually, I was coaching in uh, Sweden. We won our first 18 under European championship ever with the guys. Wow! Yeah. And it's it's definitely, from what I've heard, at least gotten way better in the last couple of years. And I'm assuming that I mean any type of Olympic event should at least raise the attention a little bit. The junior teams are are mostly homegrown talent. I take it, correct? Yeah, yeah, all Israeli kids. Right. Um, and I think, you know, if, is, if you guys were to win a medal, this would only be the fifth Olympic medal Israel has ever had. Is um, that right? Has there been that so few? I think so. No, it would be the 10th. I got that okay. wrong. It would be the 10th medal. Um, and I find that really exciting for you guys, especially because, as you said, it's at the Olympics, like imagine how much impact it would have, you know, if you're the 10th medalist ever. Absolutely. I mean, I think the biggest problem is that there's no league in Israel. So they never there's no kid who grows up and says, I want to be like this player or anything. They don't really they're not getting to witness any baseball all the baseball games in america take place in the middle of the night over there so i think now that they're gonna have like israel baseball televised and have some people actually tune in i think it will definitely grow the game a lot that's true and i, I mean as you know we're on the east coast and, and you are as well you, you'll be there so you won't have to deal with this experience but you know i think yeah. most uh american or north north american um baseball fans are sort of dreading the prospect of having to get up at five six in the morning to watch watch these games but luckily israel's uh you know much further east and closer to tokyo so these should be like you know mid mid morning mid afternoon games and um you know from from the people we've talked to about this when when israel's on on to you know in an olympic event you know it'll be broadcast it'll be on tv and i think a lot of the country will be watching even if they don't really understand what's going on in the baseball game yeah i would hope so i would hope so i know my parents are both in israel currently and they're definitely going to be watching with all my family members of course of course yeah what an amazing thing to be able to cheer on for me just because it's such a big like history thing does going being in the tokyo dome mean anything to you is that a big deal? Um, well, we don't get to play in the Tokyo Dome, unfortunately. They're doing, like, I think track and gymnastics in there or something. Right, right. We have games. About, is the opening ceremonies there? Sorry, I should uh, Oh, I, um, I say that because you brought it up. I honestly don't even know to be – I probably oh, should fine. know. I probably should know, but uh, I don't know. I know my brother – was in the Tokyo Dome and uh, he said it was amazing. We have some uh, players on our team currently that were at the WBC in 2017 right. that played in the Tokyo Dome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard nothing but amazing things. I heard the atmosphere there is wild and very loud. But uh, I, Unfortunately, you know, this uh, this Olympics is, is taking place while there's still ongoing COVID restrictions. It, I, I take it that will sort of limit your ability to sort of be around and, and watching other Olympic sports and things like that while you're there. Yeah, and that's really sad, honestly. I'm a huge basketball guy. I was really looking forward to going to see Team USA, all my, like, favorite athletes play, and, like, Simone Biles, like, legends like that. I'm not going to get to really see anything. I I hope they ease some of those restrictions because it seems like, you know, 
if anyone can can be there to watch things, it should be athletes who I, I think, you know, you guys are all already have to be double vaccinated in order to even go to the games. And, you know, you're already in the Olympic Village, like the ability to, to go to some other event, you know, they, they need people to be there, I think. Exactly. I think now they said they're letting like, I think at least for baseball, they said 10,000 spectators. So I don't understand if we're getting tested every day and we're vaccinated and everything and we're eating at the same cafeteria and right. Olympic Village, how we can't go to the other events. But I'm not going to be the one to complain about anything. Well, you know, it's amazing to be there, but I, I really hope you and the rest of the team really get to enjoy as much of the Olympic experience as you possibly can. It's, you know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for you guys, for, for a lot Absolutely. of you guys. Yeah. yeah. So Dean, uh, when, when you're not, uh, cool. when you're not on the team Israel baseball team, um, what, what's, what's going on in your life these days? Uh, I mean, I've been working since I got back from Israel after we qualified for the Olympics. I've just been working for my dad uh, for the last two years because I get to leave at three o'clock to go to baseball practice every day. Sure. But uh, I graduated with a finance degree. So looking to get back into (laughs) some financial uh, sector when I finish with the Olympics. I know I have a couple of like events that I'm going to speak at uh, after. So hopefully I can network and find something good. I would imagine Olympian looks pretty good on LinkedIn. <laughs> you know, like my my resume says like I like baseball, but it doesn't say <laughs> I, went, I went to the Olympics for baseball. <laughs> yeah, definitely going to put <laughs> add that to the resume 100%. That's really great. I got two questions for you. One is uh are there any sort of Jewish athletes that you you always looked up to or thought were, you know, important because they were Jewish? Maybe I mean you might be playing with a couple this summer. Um and yeah. The next one is, are there any young Jewish athletes you've been paying attention to that our listenership should watch out for? Um, for the first question, Jewish athletes, I grew up, uh, I mean, definitely everyone with any baseball player would say Sandy Koufax, how he sat out the World Series to observe the holidays. Sure. Uh, my dad was uh, on Maccabi Haifa for basketball. Oh, so wow. I grew up idolizing my dad and playing basketball with him always. Um, and I grew up a Maccabi Haifa fan because of him. And uh I guess Ian Kinsler was always the person I would always pick on fantasy baseball. And whenever he was on TV and watching games with my friends, I'd be like, that guy's Jewish. Um, so that's, that's great. basically it. Yeah. <laughs> and now you get and to be then, on team uh, with him. Yeah. And then kids to look out for, I would say, uh, one, the kids staying in my house right now, a teammate on my team, uh, Israel team, he's playing uh, at Mansfield College. His name's Asaf Lowengart. He's an absolute stud. I would, I could see him making some waves soon. Um, I've been seeing him grind every day with me for the last couple of weeks. He's a superstar. And um, that's really basically it. I know a lot of the kids I coached, they're training hard over there. It's tough in Israel because baseball is mm-hmm. not big, but they're doing all they can and trying to get into colleges here and stuff like that. That's great. That's a, that's a name we'll definitely keep in mind and continue to look out for. should say um, South Florida is well represented on the, on the Israel baseball team. Danny Valencia uh, also, yep. also going to the team, you know, a Cuban Jew, but Miami born, I think. And uh, yeah. former Toronto Blue Jay loved Danny, loved Danny when he was here. Really excited to watch him in, in, in the Olympics as well. Yeah. I love Danny. We actually just got to go to one of the qualifying matches, the USA versus Dominican he took us out. I got to say hi to like Jose Bautista and some of the players on other teams because of, because Danny knew them. So it was wow. definitely a nice experience. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Living yeah. In Toronto, yeah. We will, we'll always have a soft spot for Jose. Oh, and you'll love this. We walk up to the to the dugout for the Dominican Republic. He, I was with Tal and Asaf as well. And uh, he goes, you guys want to say hi to Jose Bautista? We walk up to the dugout. And he walks over to Danny and goes, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Hilarious. We all started dying. You know, you, you'll, I think you'll appreciate this this uh, anecdote. There's another uh, baseball player named Jose Batista who was a pitcher uh, back in the 90s, and he is Jewish. And, no you way. know, it's just like known that he's a Jewish baseball player. But because of that, it's been, I think, misreported that various times that Jose Batista, the, the you know, the right fielder and first baseman slugger for the Toronto Blue Jays is Jewish as well. And as far that's, as I know, I, he, he is not. But uh, yeah, you know, some good name mistaking um, that's led that's to that funny. confusion. But that's, that's great. great. What an amazing thing to, what an amazing experience. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, we really do appreciate it. Yeah, we don't want to take up time. any of your time in your car. You should go inside and train with your teammates. Go yeah, play with your friends. It, guys. I, so, Get a weighted <laughs> ball in your hands. Uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, good luck. Uh, lots of muzzle. We're, we're so proud of Team Israel. I think everyone is. And we're just, everyone, I think Jews around the world are just going to be rooting. You know, you know, we're going to be rooting for you guys so hard. Appreciate that, guys. Thank you for your time. Well, thanks again to Dean Pellman for joining us. And uh, Gabe, I know, I know you're just 
thrilled along with me to watch Team Israel play baseball soon. It's going to be so excited. I I also have to say I kept on thinking his name was Dean Pelton, like on Who's Community. Oh, I'm okay. sure he gets that a lot. And I yeah, apologize that's when I bring out the Dean from Community. Um, but no, Dean was was is a really good guy and really excited to have on. Um, and you know, told some great stories and we're wishing him nothing but success in the Olympics. It'll be interesting to see how Israel performs in some of these uh exhibition matches. I don't know that I'll watch all of them necessarily, or that you know, I, I guess we can we can watch them on Max Live, which is great. Um, but it'll be interesting to see this how this, you know, how this team works together. It's a it's a different team than the team that qualified for the Olympics. So, you know, these teams are always changing, but uh it's gonna be exciting, I think, to see Danny Valencia, Ian Kinsler. Uh, and some of the other um, guys we know better from MLB and, and seeing some of the younger guys who are coming up with the team now. There's a lot of stories and a lot of, a lot of work the team is doing to bond and play together like a team and capture some of the magic they had over the last three years. Um, and then here's hoping it continues. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I think Israel, again, it has got a great chance at the Olympics. All it's got to do is win, win a couple games and uh, it's pretty great. Uh, it's it's going to be exciting to watch. Um, we'll be back in a, in a few weeks with, you know, more coverage about the Olympics, hopefully uh, preparing everybody for that. Yeah, some, some Jewish athletes Olympics that we're following until the Olympics happen. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's going to be very exciting and we're, we're thrilled to bring it to you. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. As always, our producer is Michael Freeman. We are the Mench Warmers. Uh, thanks to Dean for being on. And, and uh, please stay tuned. You can find us on uh, cjn.ca as well as uh, anywhere you find your podcasts. Jamie, yeah. do you have any sort of parting wisdom? Just to say that uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Menschwarmers. And uh, if you find our Twitter page, you can find our comprehensive list of all of the Jews who have won any hardware in the big four professional sports leagues. Uh, as far as we can tell, the first time this information was ever compiled in one place. Uh, so maybe we'll find a more formal way to publish that as well. And I'm hardware. Happy, and we're also happy to be proved wrong if there's somebody that we missed on this list. You know, it was just me going through Wikipedia and trying to find all the names so happy to be informed that there's more um again men warmers on twitter uh we're there with all your jews and sports news on a you know ongoing basis and and please keep on interacting us with twitter we love talking to you guys we love chatting with you guys comparing stories um you know we had a lot of fun being online during the last few euro cup games so keep yep. it up we're, we're really enjoying it and thanks for thanks for listening see you again soon